Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with Andrew Funderberg, or Fundy as he's known, about his brand of street photography and why he emphasizes the significance of printing your work. And we talk about why one photograph from one studio shot 100 years ago means so much to him that he's traveling across the world to have his own experience. Check it out. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey. Hi, Fundy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. You are not only the founder of a very successful very software successful. company, it is. Um, you're also a passionate street photographer. Yes, I love street photography. Right, and you link street photography to storytelling. And in fact, you are actually walking, you're yeah, walking around with your storyteller. Story yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about why you're so drawn to street photography. So I think there's two reasons. One is I'm drawn to old street photography because we get to see these slices of life in the past. And so we get to see the difference of the past to today. You know, you're just walking down and you see the shops that people used to go to and what they used to buy, what kids used to play on the street. And So you mean literally the older photos the older that you're drawn photos. to that, the looking at And those. so when I'm out doing action shots in the street, I'm thinking about as I'm taking this slice, what will this photo look like when my kids take a look at it 40, 40 years from now, mm. into the past? And how do you connect that with, obviously uh, embedded in that is the idea of story, but what do you see as the storytelling aspects? Are you, are you looking for something that when someone looks at the photograph, they can kind of connect it themselves? I think so. I think uh, street photography, when you're doing action, you're trying to tell the story of society at that time, right. in that place. And the other aspect of, of street photography is that I force myself to go up and, and talk to people, a lot of times homeless people, and I always start by asking them their story. So uh, there's one of the photos you have, there's this great guy and he's leaning on this, uh, on something and he just introduced himself, he says, hi, I'm Lee Majors, international hustler. And I was like, this guy is good, I like this guy. He'd been to all of these places and done all of these things. And uh, I like to do portraits of people and then I transfer everything from my Leica to my phone and print it on a Fuji Polaroid printer and then give them a copy. And so- So real time while you're right real there. Real time right there while I'm talking to them. And that really comes down to my belief that I think everybody has a unique story mm -hmm. and everybody deserves to have that story be told. Yeah. And print is the way to keep the story alive after that moment's passed. Right. That, you know, I think that's actually very striking because it's not difficult to get in the mode where you're so used to capturing, mm -hmm. keeping, sharing, and yet the main subject actually doesn't get... Out of the loop, yeah. yeah. And it's something that I personally found that I've put a lot more effort into making sure that I find out the person I photographed, make sure I get the, yeah. the, either the digital image or if there's an opportunity to get a print. Um, because I do think that matters. And you could go years with that one person never seeing the one print that everybody loves so much and is talking about in the subject. I mean, it's not unusual in photography. And I think uh, there are a lot of great aspects of social media, but I think one of the things that we have to be careful about is when we take a photo and we share it on social media, uh, the photo then becomes all about us mm -hmm. instead of the subject right. who was the story of that photo. Right. And I think that's really what's powerful about print is that if we print the story oftentimes it ends up back to that person or someone that cares about that person. And so then photography is again about the subject. You mentioned a little bit uh, kit, the kit you use. You t tell me what you, I, I get the impression yeah. that you're out just having known you personally for years, that when you go out to shoot, you're, you've got a pretty light kit with you. Yes, yeah, mostly because I'm lazy. I don't wanna carry a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's good uh, to know yourself. I, Awareness is important. So I, I shoot with a digital Leica. Uh -huh. And uh, I only have a 50 millimeter and a 35 millimeter. Okay. And so I use the 35 for action shots and I use the 50 for portraits. Okay. And that's it. Um, and Is it like a little bag? You just got a little. Yeah, I have a little, a little, I have a, I, I have a little bag. Actually, it was really cool. My buddy that runs Holdfast Gear, we designed a bag together that fit just that kit and just my little printer. Oh, neat. So that's my, that's my kit. So I have everything in a bag. I have my camera, my two lenses, and my printer. Okay. And Altogether. what kind of printer? It's a Fuji little Polaroid in Instax printer. Basically, I have an SD card reader that connects to my phone, and then the phone prints wirelessly to the printer. So it takes about 30 seconds to go from camera to print to give yeah. to the subject. And how big is the print? Fun. 
It's tiny. The it's tiny like, little yeah, ones. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. two by those. three. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And then, um, but in terms of the work you're you're doing to really campaign for storytelling and mm -hmm. print your work, which I know you're very passionate yep. about, I completely agree too. Um, and it's not just about like everything living in the print. I, I think, and I know you agree with me that if you want to become a better photographer. Printing your work is one of the best ways to do that big, especially when you print your work big yeah. and you really see all the elements that are lost exactly. on a screen. One thing that uh, I've discovered about print is that uh, it can fool you both ways. Is you can think you have an awesome photo and it looks great on your little laptop screen mm -hmm. and you print that up at 16 by 20 and it looks like crap. You're, You're like, that is a crappy photo. photo. What was I thinking? I suck so much more But than luckily you. for us, the opposite can be true. I've had photos mm -hmm. where I've taken and I just, it didn't do anything for me. Right. And I'm doing a print project where I do a print for every day of the year. And uh, you, you run out of stuff to print sometimes. You're like, well, I got this one. It's probably not that good, but I'll print it just to get this day out of the way. Right. And you print it out and you're like, wow, this, is yeah. a much richer photo than I thought it was yeah. because it's in print and you, you view things differently. And I think also the more experience you have with printing, the more you start to recognize that different mediums flatter different types of photographs Correct. more powerfully than most people might guess. Yep. Um, you know, in the instance you just mentioned, when I have an image where I feel like it's a great moment, shaky exposure, mm -hmm. like right on the, yep. um, I know that um, basically the dots per inch, if I have it printed on a canvas, for mm -hmm. instance, versus like a sharp metallic, yeah. I'm gonna have such a better looking print from that kind of possibly yeah. shaky image. Yeah, you can hide the flaws. Right, yep. yeah. So what, tell me what this is, story Storyteller. The storyteller. Yes. So uh, I think that uh, one thing, getting, getting older, I'm getting older unfortunately. I know I look like, I know I look 29, pop. but I'm not. Uh, I'm getting the age where my parents are getting older and then my kids are getting older and so I'm seeing and uh, luckily my grandparents are still around but I'm seeing the importance of print as related to family stories mm. so you know we pull out these old prints and grandma can tell a story or mom can tell a story about when I was a little kid and or they can tell a story about when uh, you know before I was born and so I'm seeing the importance of print in stories for families yes and that kind of goes back to as photographers sometimes we get caught up in it's about us because we get all of this attention right. when we do these great photos and we love attention and we love attention <laughs> we're suckers for attention because we don't get it other places no no you know we're by ourselves with our you know editing our photos so we get some we <laughs> gotta get it. where we are so uh the i think that going through this process as just a family person uh really just gets to the point of the importance of print as family stories. Mm -hmm. And as we go out and we photograph events, whether they be portraits or weddings or whatever, or just street portraits, that these prints have meaning for families that will be stories that last generations. They, they're, yeah. they're a bridge across generations. Yeah, and if you've ever sat there at a funeral and looked through old photographs, oh, you, you know cool. exactly what that means, like how powerful yeah. that is. You brought, a, you brought a photograph, you brought a print, I right? I did, so this one, this. so this was my great, great uncle on my mom's side. Uh, great, great uncle on your mom's side, yeah. okay. So my, my great, great uh, grandma's brother and this was taken in World War I. So this actual print, I mean, look at the lighting. This print is 100 years old. This is the actual original yeah. print. 100 years old, it's glued onto some cardboard. And it was common to have photographs taken in World when you're at war and then mail those photos home, right. which is what he did. And unfortunately, he was killed right after. So we can see on the back of this. Right after the photograph was right taken. Right after the photograph wow. was taken. So we're, we're not sure how long, but he didn't make it home. Yeah. So this was the last photo ever taken of him. And what's really cool is that I went on the Google. On the Google. I went on the Google and I looked up and this studio is still in business. Shut up. Yep. So me and uh, my buddy Ben are going to travel back to France and go to the studio and have our portrait taken. That's awesome. And what does it say on the back? Uh, his name is Stephen Gurney, brother of Mary Gurness, Gurney Wallace, and he was killed in action shortly after this photo was taken. So you're going to go back there. What if it's the same photographer? I doubt it's the same photographer, but it might be. That'd be really cool. Be uh, but I doubt it will be. But um, I hope it's, it's funny. I mean, you look at, look, look at the light on that. I mean, it's perfect portrait yeah. lighting. 
Yeah. And I've been talking to some friends and they think that it was probably a natural light studio. So it was built for the windows would be the soft boxes, right? So they built the windows in a specific, specific spot. So yeah. that would be the soft box for... And, and this thing was not tweaked in Photoshop to the end degree. I don't think there was any Photoshopping done no. on this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, how cool though, like how meaningful. That, the, so, yep. so the experience of going back and going to that studio and, yep. and sitting for a portrait very similar to that, that really hits home how immensely powerful photography yep. is. And so that's the, and like you said, that, that completes the full circle. Yeah, yeah, I love it. All right, how can people find out more about you? Friend me on Facebook, Andrew Funderberg. You can go to our website, Fundy Designer. One of the things that we're launching on our website is that you will actually be on also, is we're uh, asking photographers to talk about a print that's special to them. Right, right. And so you can visit our website and you can uh, view those videos as they go up. Perfect. And then, and Fundy Designer, where you now have um, the same software, we work together with Lush Albums, yes. the same software that powers Lush Albums, mm -hmm. um, it has now been released to have an auto design function where people yes. can literally just click a button and have an entire album design. Boom. Exactly. Yep. So amazing. it works off the timestamp of your photos, click yeah. a button, design an album. Um, but we have this awesome new storyboard feature. So you can select multiple images and group them together. You can tag in images to be a pano or a main image. And so you get to be the storyteller, yeah. but you don't have to do any of the work. <laughs> Right? Like perfect. I know, because as photographers, we like to be a little lazy. Yeah. And there's so much work involved. There's so, so much work. That's nice. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Fundy. And thank you for joining me here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV so you can have your own experience with this unbelievable channel of educational content.